Every year, at least 1.7 million people suffer a traumatic brain injury in the United States. Often called an invisible wound, it contributes to one-third of all injury-related deaths. What is traumatic brain injury, also known as TBI? It is an injury to the brain that occurs when a sudden trauma causes brain damage. With the right actions, there is real hope for patients when TBI occurs. In cases of traumatic brain injuries, categorizations generally happen in terms of mild, moderate, and severe injuries, with moderate to severe injuries generally involving a greater variety of different types of deficits, whether they're physical, cognitive, emotional, or behavioral deficits. We're also looking at differences in terms of whether they're a focal injury, meaning confined to a specific area or region of the brain, versus more global deficits or diffuse deficits which are spread across the brain. Traumatic brain injury is considered a silent epidemic because of the rate of incidence. On a national level, there's about 1.7 million people per year that suffer a brain injury. About 40% of those, or 600,000, actually occur in an automobile accident. And even though this is happening at that rate, very few people really understand this, that this occurs every day in America, and that it can be very devastating to the injured person and the family. Morning, Samantha. How are you today? Excellent. Before my accident, I had no clue what a TBI stood for. Samantha Ambrose experienced a severe traumatic brain injury as the result of a car accident. She and her family lived through the devastation and understand the importance of finding a comprehensive treatment program. Samantha sustained a rather severe traumatic brain injury at the age of 17 as a result of being injected from a vehicle during a head-on motor collision. As a result of that, Samantha suffered a variety of different physical, emotional, and behavioral challenges. And unfortunately, due to restrictions in insurance coverage, um, as well as other types of resources, she was confined to really psychiatric treatment versus comprehensive neurorehabilitation. Well, presently in America, if you, uh, under your health insurance, you have severe limits in terms of the therapies that you can receive as a brain injured person. And, and it's even more so drastically limited under Medicaid and under Medicare. Specifically under Medicare, you're limited to $1,900 per year for therapies. And that's in contrast to in Michigan, where the doctor says this is the depth of therapy you need, and that may be persistent and aggressive for your lifetime. It was so odd seeing pictures of me in high school playing something that I could not tell my body to do again. I could not throw a softball as I did before. I could not run as I did. It was so hard. All right, great, Samantha. So now we've reviewed everything, set some goals for next week. After completing her acute rehab, she returned home only to experience many ongoing challenges. Samantha's family sought a more structured, formal treatment program at Neuro International. Neuro International was developed specifically to fill that void uh, that we found in the neuro rehabilitation process to help clients get the services they need to prepare them to go home and live as independently as possible. But beyond that, we put a tremendous amount of effort into developing a culture and philosophy of caring for others, respecting their rights, and really um, ensuring that dignity is part of the rehabilitation process. Once Samantha was able to access post-acute neurorehabilitation, she was able to have a comprehensive multidisciplinary team of clinicians, doctors, skilled therapists that really helped her address holistically the physical, the emotional, and the behavioral challenges that she was experiencing and help her achieve true personal and social independence. Believe it or not, I have a bad side. And especially when I have a headache or I'm under stress, I have my bad days. And people have just, they've learned how to handle me and what to do in order to give me better care in those situations. Repeat after me and really enunciate all of your sounds. Getting rehab right is crucial. Financial resources and payer plans shouldn't limit access. The long-term cost is too great. It's tremendously important for people recovering from a traumatic brain injury to get the services they need as early on as the re in the rehab continuum. We know that people who get the needed services, the required services from all the multidisciplinary uh, treatment team, those people um, have better recoveries. They reach functional independence in a shorter period of time. 
One of the biggest risks is really being confined to specific treatment options or lack thereof, specifically meaning treatment options at the post-acute level of care vary from program to program. Uh, there also tend to be a lack of consensus in terms of different post-acute programs in the approaches taken, for example, punitive models versus more collaborative and client-centered models. And by doing a program that is more client-centered, folks are able to have a more comprehensive treatment plan, a more dynamic treatment plan that really addresses what it is that that client needs versus what it is that is generically presented to that patient. Through our research and experience, we understand that uh, the historical treatment models for people recovering from brain injury were fragmented models. They weren't comprehensive. Uh, they didn't necessarily have on-site uh, doctors and clinicians leading uh, the team. Uh, we believe that someone recovering from a traumatic brain injury needs comprehensive multidisciplinary services provided in real life settings, family type environments, and we believe that if those services, comprehensive services are provided in the right type of environment that we can optimize outcomes and get someone home as quickly as possible. But not all cases of traumatic brain injury are as severe as Samantha's. In fact, 75% of all TBI are considered mild but still require treatment. I think it's important for patients, especially of mild traumatic brain injuries, to understand that there are a variety of subtle deficits that can sometimes present, whether they be deficits in cognitive abilities, such as memory and attention or concentration, whether they be personality changes, emotional changes, most of which tend to be more pronounced in moderate to severe injuries. Not understanding that uh, these deficits have occurred within patients, oftentimes families may be unaware that they need constant aid to daily living, which would include prompting so that they do the right things, but also protection so that they don't burn down the house, self-medicate, wander off, take the keys and go for a drive. You know, all of these protective measures are about honoring the fact that not even the patient nor the physicians or the family as a collective might necessarily understand these significant changes that have occurred in their brain. Treatment options at the post-acute level of care vary from program to program. And by doing a program that is more client-centered, folks are able to have a more comprehensive treatment plan, a more dynamic treatment plan that really addresses what it is that that client needs versus what it is that is generically presented to that patient. A comprehensive approach by qualified experts can make all the difference in recovery. Being here in Nora has provided so many wonderful aspects to not only my personality, but everyone here at Neuro has helped me tremendously. At Neuro International, we're committed to helping our clients achieve independence. If you or a loved one has experienced a TBI, there is hope. For more information, visit us at neurointernational.com.